Hey everybody, my name is Daniel with Champion Industries and today we're going to do a quick tutorial guide on the daily and weekly cleaning that you need to do with your Champion Flight Type dish machine. Now behind me I have a very small version of our Champion EUCCW series, that will be the wide belt, but this is going to apply to the slim line as well as the wide belt. This also is one of our newer Pro Series machines with the nice touchscreen controller. But again, these basics are going to apply all across the board to your Champion Flight Type dish machine, so let's get started. So first things first, let's lay down a little bit of fundamentals for the different types of cleanings that we have on these machines. We have a few different, uh, few different categories of that, right? And they basically go into the levels in which we're going to go down as far as getting into the different systems of the machine. So your most basic cleaning is your in between the meal periods cleaning, right? This is when we're gonna turn the machine off that will automatically start draining the machine if you have one of these Pro Series machines. If not, you would turn off the main power and then open up those manual ball valve drains located at the front uh, lower section of the machine right there in front of those individual tanks. And that would allow the machine to stop heating, drain all the water out, and allow us to open up the doors, let it cool down for a minute. We'll do some basic things like clean out our scrap screens and look for large items that may have gotten caught. Now we have our end of the day cleaning. This is the next one in the steps where we'll do all those same things, right? We'll turn the machine off, we'll drain the water out, we'll clean the scrap screens, but we're gonna go into a couple of different uh, deeper details, right? Now we have our big end of the week cleaning, which shouldn't take that long, but we're just gonna get into a few more details where same thing, turn off the machine, drain the water, clean the scrap screens, but there may be a couple of steps extra in there where we, let's say we need to delime the machine as well. We'll get into all that in this video, but, First things first, we always want to make sure that we're being safe no matter what type of cleaning we're doing on these machines. And that really comes down to the basics of if we're going to open up these doors and really start grabbing at some different items, we always want to make sure the power is off, the water is drained, whether it's an automatic draining machine or one of the ones where we open the valves and leave the doors open for a few minutes. That would allow the inside of the machine and some of those different things we'll be touching to cool off. We don't want any burns. We don't want to introduce our hands or any other items to, uh, to very hot water. We just don't need those things mixing. We want to keep everybody safe with this. So safety is always number one. And then from there, we'll start to get into some details. So next up, we'll go into our in-between meal period cleaning. So for our in-between the meal period cleaning, let's start with turning our machine off. And at that point, if it's an automatically draining machine, you'll hear that water start to rush out from that machine. The heaters and everything will turn off. If it's a standard machine, you'll just turn off the pain power, main power on the control panel, and then open up those ball valve drains that are found underneath the pre-wash, the wash section, and the auxiliary rinse tanks, right? So your machine may be set up a little bit differently from this machine. You may have, you'll have your pre-wash, you may have two different drains for your wash section, and then you have your auxiliary rinse that needs to be drained as well. So, I would start, once that's draining, I can go ahead and open up these doors. Like I said before, we want to allow this machine to start cooling off. So the doors on the inside, the belt, all these different uh, wash arms, upper and lower, all those are going to be hot and still some of them filled still with hot water. So we want to allow that all to cool off. So typically what we do after we've turned off the machine, we've drained it, we've opened up our doors, we'll give that machine 10, 15 minutes to start cooling off with all the doors open. And so that'd be a great time to go either address something else that needs to be done in the kitchen area or maybe grab some supplies or a cart uh, something that we can take out some components and put them on. So I'm going to give this machine a few extra minutes to cool off and then let's take a look at some of these items that we will be cleaning in our in between the meal period cleaning. So I'm here in front of the pre-wash section of our Champion Flight type machine. So if you need some orientation behind this, so where you load the plates and dishes and everything that goes inside this machine, this will be the first section here that, that uh, we'll come across is our pre-wash. So what we're going to address in this in-between meal period cleaning is we're just going to want to make sure that this pre-wash basket here is cleaned out good and proper. So I'm going to start by taking the cover off. If you ever want to, and if it comes in handy, you can always hang that right there. Isn't that pretty cool, right? Well, I'm just going to take it off for right now because I've got to pull out this scrap screen. So what I'm going to do is reach inside here, pull out this scrap screen first, 
And I'm gonna take this right here, and it's just the right size where I can take it over to the trash can and I can knock out any larger items. And then we're gonna take it over to the three compartment sink and I'm gonna wash it out if it has any, uh, any items in there that are kind of stuck on and won't come off in the trash can. And I might set those on my cart that I brought along. So I'm just gonna set this over here for now. The next thing we're gonna grab is inside here, inside the basket, the basket itself has its own little, uh, own little section here. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this. Take this over to the trash can, bang out any big items that got caught in there, and then take it over to this uh, three comp sink and gonna go ahead and spray that all out from outside to in, that way it all comes out. Uh, so again, same thing, we'll set that on our cart and uh, bring that back over to the machine. So at this point, all we really need to do is take a nice visual inspection of the inside of this up top, middle, and down inside the tank here and make sure nothing big has kind of gotten lost in there. Um, you know, little paper napkins and uh, straws and all kinds of stuff that maybe had gotten, uh, you know, left on some items. The pre-wash is doing its job. It's knocking off any large items before they uh, continue on to the wash section and the rinse section. So I'm just gonna take a look for any large items. I don't see any. Well, I've also got a fairly clean machine here, but you might see some things. So just give it that little visual inspection, make sure nothing big or uh, anything has kind of gotten built up on anything too bad to where we wouldn't be able to uh, regain operation when we start back up. So to go in reverse order, let's go ahead and put it back together. I've got my scrap basket. I'm gonna go ahead and set that back in here the correct way. There we go, and it only goes one way. And then I'll take my scrap screen that goes over top of that basket, that rides on this track, back inside the machine. And we're gonna to wanna to make sure that when we do put it in there, it goes all the way back inside that track. And then last but not least, we've got our cover. We're gonna put that back on. So like I said, nice little visual inspection. We've cleaned out everything we need to. And then we're gonna go ahead and close this door and we're gonna move on to the wash section. So as we're closing this up, there's one thing that's very important to point out to you. And again, this is all in the, uh, in the spirit of safety. Now we do have labels on these machines that are that come on it, uh, but I want you to understand that when you are closing these doors, these are big, heavy, insulated doors, right? You can tell when you go and push one closed, they're supposed to have that, that slam hard sound because they are meant to seal all that water on the inside and keep it from coming outside. But when we close these doors, your hands need to be down here. You can actually feel this handle down here below the, uh, the bottom part of this door. Never, ever, ever put your hands above here and then push the door closed. That is a pinch point. You can cut yourself real bad, uh, made to have some in uncomfortable situations. So, and we even supply stickers. This one hasn't gotten them yet, uh, but we supply stickers that say, hands do not belong above this point right here. So always grab the door at the bottom or just give it a nice push close. And it should sound just like that. Moving on to our wash section. Yours may look very similar to this. There may be a little extra spacing in here. However your machine is configured, it's the same basic concept for this in-between meal period cleaning. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, this one has two here. We're gonna grab each of these scrap screens, pull them out of the machine. You won't have a basket like we did on the, uh, on the pre-wash but we have our individual scrap screens. Again, the right size, the meant to take over to the trash cans, get out any large items, and then take them over to the three compartment sink and give them a nice little clean out, put them back on your cart, and place back inside the machine. And just like we did uh, in the pre-wash section, when we have these out, we're just gonna give a nice little visual inspection inside the tank down here, just in case something some for some reason got down in there. We're just gonna give it a nice little visual inspection. We're nice and clean. So once these uh, scrap baskets come out, the screens and get cleaned, they can go right back inside the machine. And then next up, we'll move on to our auxiliary rinse. So I'm at the last section on this machine right here, or our last tank, should I say, in the same thing, just like our, uh, our wash tank. But I've only got one scrap screen in mine here. In this, I have the scrap screen. 
Uh, when I pull this out, I'm gonna do the same thing. Any large items, anything that got in there to the trash can, give it that spray out in the three compartment sink, visual inspection of the inside of this tank, making sure nothing got in there, and then I'm gonna put my screen back in. Once I do, and I've got that all the way in there, I'm done with my auxiliary rinse tank. Give it one last little check, make sure there's nothing got in there, and we're good to go. So I'm standing here at our unload end of this machine, but the same rule is gonna apply for both the unload end and the load end back on the other side of the machine. In this in-between the meal period cleaning, I'm gonna to wanna to take a look down in here, inside underneath the conveyor belt and see if anything has gotten down in there, whether it's a, you know, a utensil or a fork or something like that that had gotten blown through or come out of a rack. I wanna make sure that nothing's down in there where anything can get caught up. Same thing down on the load end. You might find a little bit extra food soil down there. That would be a great time to um, take your wash down hose that you may have somewhere in the kitchen. Again, same time when those drains are already open and you can spray some of that stuff back into some of those scrap screens to be caught. And so again, just trying to keep everything on a general level of cleanliness. That way when we start back up for the next meal period, you got a nice clean machine to work with. So once you've inspected both the unload end and the load end back on the other side of the machine, we've taken a look at our pre-wash, wash sections, and our auxiliary rinse sections. Now we've cleaned out all those screens and scrap baskets and inspected all the tanks and all the inside, just looking for any of those big items. You are done with your uh, in-between the meal periods cleaning. That's all you need to do, and it shouldn't take that long. Really, for a machine like this, uh, 15, 20 minutes just to make sure that after the machine's cooled down, just to get all those screens, take a look around, make sure the machine's ready to go, and then you're ready whenever it's time to go ahead and start turning that machine back on after closing those drains, if you have the manual drains, and allowing that machine to fill up with water and start to warm up whenever it's time for that next meal period. So at this point, you're done. All right, so now we're going to build upon what we did in our in-between the meal period cleaning with our end of the day cleaning. So it's going to go in a little bit more detail, but we're still going to do all the same things that we learned to do at our, uh, in our previous one, right? So we're going to start by doing the same thing. We're going to turn our machine off. Now this is at the end of the day. This is after the last meal period. We're going to start by turning our machine off, draining the water out, opening up those doors, allowing it to cool, just like we did before. Then we're also gonna pull all those scrap screens out inside the machine, but we're gonna go a couple steps further. Let me show you here on our uh, pre-wash section. Let's go into it. All right, so here in the pre-wash section, I did everything like we did before, right? I let the machine cool down. I have removed the scrap screen down here. I've removed the scrap basket. I have everything on my nice little handy dandy cart over here. I've given my once over general inspection inside here. If anything needs to be washed down with the wash down hose, this would be a great time to do that as well. But we have a few more things we need to take out. And I'm gonna start with this upper wash arm you see up in here. So this upper wash arm here, now remember, we've allowed our machine to cool off, but it still may retain a little bit of a uh, little bit of warm water inside of this. So be prepared to get a little bit of water on you. And again, always give adequate time for this to all cool off. It really doesn't take but a few more minutes. So to take this out, what I'm gonna do is push up on the wash arm a little bit. There is a lever inside here. You'll do this with two hands. I'm gonna push that lever up and that's gonna allow this to drop down. So when I do this, Again, remember this is on a perfectly dry machine. I'm gonna pull it straight out and it has some guides that it goes on back there. So I'm gonna pull that out until there. I'm not gonna let it drop because I don't wanna bang it up or dent it or anything like that. And then I'm gonna immediately gonna tilt the back down. And that's gonna allow any water that was left in here to go back inside the machine. Now a little bit's gonna come out through these nozzles and we'll look closer at those here in just a moment. But once I've got that shaken out of some water, I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna put it over on my cart. We'll come back to that in just a minute. So that's the upper wash arm. So now I'm gonna grab the lower one. So this one, if you can see this down here at the bottom of your screen, I'm just gonna give that a little pull up to get it out of its notches. And I'm gonna pull that straight out, same thing. As I pull this out, I'm gonna be angling it back to try to get that water to run out. Since these nozzles here, these little holes here, are facing up, this is gonna retain a little bit more water than that upper one. So now I've got this holding just like that. I'm gonna hold it up 
pour that water out, and then I'm gonna set this over to the side on my cart. So now, deep inside this tank, and I'm gonna point the camera down here. There we go. Down inside this tank, and this one happens to be over on the right, and you're gonna see this on multiple different tanks in this machine. We reach down in here, and there is this box, and it'll pull out, because it's on a couple of tracks. This right here, this little box, is one of the most important little filters on this machine. Even though it may be small, it is very mighty. Uh, this little box is called our pump intake screen, and this is your, your dish machine. Each tank is gonna have one of these. This is the last line of defense before any of that water gets sucked back up in through those nice, uh, those nice pumps in your machine. So, every day, we are gonna pull this out, clean it off. We're gonna take it over to the three compartment sink. If there's anything big that's gotten on there, we're gonna wanna wipe that off. Uh, anything that we will, again, if you don't clean this very often at all, this can get full of all kinds of awful things to, to look at and how to have to clean. Uh, but if we do it every day, we just make sure this has, we can take a little scrub brush, take it right across this thing, make sure it stays clean, rinse it out, and then always we will reinstall. I'll show that in just a minute. But if you can make a point of cleaning this every day that this machine gets used, it will never build up too badly and you will extend the life of your machine. And if the machine's running, you're happy. And if you're happy, we're happy, right? So never forget about your pump intake screen. There's one in every tank. All right, so we're gonna back up a little bit. And now at this point, I'm gonna set that over on my cart as well. And if you can see down inside here, we have a couple more little things. You can just see it on the screen there, but I have what we call a turtle shell or turtle back filter. Now that's down here at the bottom of the machine inside the tank. That's a good thing to grab a little brush brush that off. Now over here we look in and see, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit better. So we have our floats down in there, you can see it, there we go. We have our, what we call the upper and the lower floats. And those are what tells the machine at any time how much water's inside that tank at that time. Back here we have our overflow uh, drain, so if for some reason the water got above that point it would flow into there but these upper and lower floats need to be able to move freely. They need to be clean. So that little rod that they're on is, needs to be free of any kind of debris and any kind of stuff that might grow on there. So this is a great time to grab a rag or something soft like that. And we will just kind of pull these up, clean in between, push them down, clean in between. Same thing on the lower one. We just want to make sure that, that those floats stay nice and clean. Or we can run into service issues and nobody ever wants to pay for a service call just to have a service technician come out and clean a machine because that's something that we should be doing every day. So at that point, once I know I've pulled out my pump intake screen over there on the right, I've addressed my floats over there, I've taken a look around inside there, I've sprayed anything out or everything out just to make sure it's nice and clean, the next thing I'm gonna do is just kinda like we always do. We give it a general inspection inside of this tank. We make sure everything looks nice and good, nice and shiny, nice and clean, and nothing is built up. So right now, at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these items for just the, the scrap uh, tank here, I'm gonna take them over to the sink, clean them up, and then we're gonna reinstall them. And I'll show you how we do that in just a moment. All right, team, we've got just a little bit better of a view here of being able to reinstall our pump intake screen. You can see down in there nicely now. So what I'm gonna do is take our pump intake screen, this being the handle right here for the top, I'm gonna slide that in through here and then I'm gonna go ahead and line that up over top of these tracks. And it should, well, looks like I got a little bit off on that one. There we go. So it slides right down on top of those tracks and I should be able to wiggle it around and it's not gonna come off. So give that a couple of shakes. You can see now we've also got a little bit better review of our, uh, of our lower drain here and the little uh, turtle back filter we have on top of that. That's looking good. We wanted to make sure that we addressed that. So now I wanna go ahead and I wanna get my upper and my lower wash arms back inside the machine. So let's back up here. 
Let's start with our lower. Let's get our lower one in. This one will be nice and easy. So let's see here. Oh, I've got my upper one in my hands. I'm gonna grab my lower. There we go. Here's my lower wash arm on this pre-wash. This is the one that fits inside here, so that way you don't get them, uh, there's no way to really get them interchanged. So I'm just gonna take that, slide it on in, and keep going, keep going, keep going, until you see that little rod right there fit down inside this track. And there's actually a little place for that rod in there. So I'm gonna push that on in, and then I should be able to lock it down, so I know that's in there. So one thing you may have seen along the way is these nice little end caps, right? These little gray end caps, sometimes they can be blue depending on what type of machine you have, and they just twist on and off. So right now, we're not terribly worried about that at the end of the day. We always just wanna give, or uh, yes, at the end of the day, we always just wanna give our, uh, on our wash arms, when we're cleaning these over in the three compartment sink, we just wanna give you a little visual inspection, make sure that nothing's blocking these little nozzles, these little holes in these wash arms. Now we'll go in the weekly cleaning, we'll go into pulling these off and checking these, but just in case for any reason you see that one of these is missing, that's not a good thing. That's a reason to grab your manager, or if you have some spare parts to this, take a look at where those may be and grab yourself an extra one of these end caps. So if these are ever missing, throw up the red flag because something needs to, that, those need to get replaced. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that one on in and now it's in place because it'll lock in. Next thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna grab our upper wash arm. Same thing, I'm just gonna give a nice little visual inspection, make sure none of these nozzles are plugged up with, uh, well, with anything for that matter. And then we're gonna go ahead and slide this one in. Remember, we wanna be washing the dishes um, and not the top of the dishwasher. Not to say we don't want that clean too, but we wanna make sure these nozzles are facing down here. Remember, the lower ones, those nozzles will be facing up, and the upper one, they'll be facing down. So. Here we go, we're gonna slide this up in. Let me move this camera just a bit. That way we can see, all right. So there's a track, starts about halfway into the machine up top, and I'm gonna get that level on there. And I'm gonna push these in. Now there's a little notch in the back. Now once that's made good contact, I can push that straight up, and I can see that it gets caught by this little lever here. Once I can jiggle on that and it doesn't move, it doesn't come out, I know that that's locked in good and proper. So that, and it's time for me to go ahead and put all of my scrap screens back in. So down here for the scrap screen for the, the pre-wash down the bucket down here. I'll go ahead and get my scrap screen in. want to forget about the lid right so we'll put the lid back in now let's move on to the wash section it's going to be very similar but we're for right now that we've got our pump intake screen clean and back in we've also got we are a visual inspection of everything making sure there's no dirty items or anything that needs to be wiped down we've looked at that um, that drain screen we've got our lower and our upper wash arms back in we have checked to make sure we've got all of our end caps we put our scrap basket, we put our scrap screen and our cover back in. We are done with the pre-wash. On to the wash section. All right, so we're at our wash section. So just like before, we are going to do again, just a nice visual inspection, make sure there's nothing dirty, nothing too, too much going on. We're going to pull our scrap screens out just like we did before, put them on our cart because we're going to take those over to the sink. We're going to clean them out in the trash can first, wash them off in the sink grab both of these and then we're going to come in a little bit closer let's take a look for those pump intake screens now they're a little bit tougher to see here but we're going to look down inside and i see i've got one down here to the back or the front left i've got a pump intake screen and there it is remember about that so every day along with, uh, at the end of the day, along with doing our, our scrap screens, we're gonna do our pump intake screen. Then we also have, again, a little tough to see on the camera, but it's down in there, it's hiding from us. We have our, uh, our main drain screen. We're gonna wanna make sure to take a look at that. And then we also have our upper and lower wash arms. So we're gonna take this, 
put this to one side. Our lower wash arm, same thing like we did before. We're just gonna pull straight up on it, pull it back, angle it so that any water comes out, and then we're gonna take that, put it on our cart. Same thing with the upper wash arm. Let's drop this down a little bit so we can see. Now we have the same kind of lever, just a little bit bigger. I'm gonna push up on that lever and allow this to drop down. And it's got that lip in the back we gotta get over. So I'm gonna pull this out. And then as it comes down and out, I'm gonna drop it down. Maybe even lay it right there, let that water come out. So once I've done that, we'll pull this out and take that over for a little cleaning. So now that we've got those out, we can, again, same thing, take a look at our belt inside here. We can clean all inside. We can wipe down. We can take a look for any bigger items. Like I said, same thing. We also have a upper and lower, uh, or upper and lower floats inside here. They're over on the left side, just like they were in my, uh, in my other tank. Same thing exactly. I want to want to make sure that those are clean, free of debris, grab a nice wet rag, uh, clean all inside that rod that those floats are on and make sure that those are free floating and nice and clean. So with that, I'm going to take these over to the sink. I'm going to clean those up and do the same thing with all my screens and then we'll come right back. All right, so thankfully I found my little light so I can give you guys a better uh, idea of what these look like, the floats. You can see those down in there now that we've got a little bit of uh, illumination on the subject. And we want to make sure that these ride up and down nice and easily. So since we're here, I'm already made sure that everything's nice and clean. I'm going to take my pump intake screen, find those tracks that it rides on. Got it on the first try. Look at me go. All right, so we got our pump intake screen back on. I've taken a look down in here at our drain looking good. All that's back together. So now it's time. Let's back up just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put my scrap screens back in. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. So let's get the left one all the way back in there. Good job. Got our right one that back in place. And just like before, we're going to go ahead and take our upper. Well, since we got the camera there, let's go ahead and our lower. We'll get our lower wash arms. Same rules apply, right? We're going to make sure that all of our little nozzles here, all of our wash nozzles, nice and clean. And then we've also got all of our end caps on here. So we're going to take this one. Now remember, your lower one's going to be the one with this nice long bar right across there, because that's the one that just sits in there with gravity. So we're going to push that all the way to the back, all the, all the way. And then we're going to push that down until it locks in place. Let's back up just a little bit so we can get a better idea. And we'll take our upper. And we've already inspected this one for all of our wash nozzles and our end caps are all locked in in place. All right, we're ready to go. So we'll take that, insert it into that track, same thing. Now this one's going to be a little bit heavier because it's bigger. We'll push it up over that pump. Once it's gone back as far as it's going to go, give it a nice little push up and it's locked in place. So with that, our wash section is clean and ready to go. So we're going to move on to our auxiliary rinse and that'll be the last tank that we have to worry about on this particular machine. So let's go. All right, so we're here at the auxiliary rinse tank. This will be the last one that we have to worry about getting down inside of. Just like before with our uh, previous cleaning, our in-between the meal period cleaning, we're gonna take this, uh, take this scrap screen out. We're gonna take it over the trash can, clean it out, take it to the sink, clean it out again, wash it off, make sure there's nothing in it. Let me set this over on my cart. And we're back, so. Now let's get inside and take a look at what we need to address in this tank. So we have our upper and lower floats. We can see those just down there to the left. Same thing, we're gonna wanna clean those. Then we also have another pump intake screen. So this one's not gonna have a handle on it. It's just gonna be a little bit smaller and you see right here that would be the bottom these little uh, these little holes here 
So just like on the pre-wash and the wash, this is one of those things where if we do this every day, we clean this absolutely every day, no exceptions whatsoever, long happy life on this machine and it runs properly and it never really gets too dirty. So pump intake screen, check. We are gonna clean that, set that there for now. Just like the other tanks, we can see down inside, let's zoom in just a little bit. We see our turtleback screen down there for our main drain. Again, want to look for any debris that sits on top of those. They can be removed. That would be probably something with the aid of the maintenance staff or somebody because there's a little bolt on there. But we want to make sure that's clean. And if it does need to come out, grab one of those people. They'd be happy to pull it out for you. And always make sure, always, always make sure that that gets reinstalled if you were to do that. So with that right there, again, we've taken a look. We've cleaned up our floats if we needed to. We've inspected the inside here. Now, being this close to the rinse, uh, a couple little things going on. So this will be the first place or one of the first places you start to see any kind of scale build up inside of this tank. That might be on those heating elements, those little coily things inside there. That's a technical term. And also on the inside of the body. Now, unlike the other tanks, we don't have any wash arms uh, to really worry about too much. We have these rinse arms. Now those will come out at a different time when we actually go to D-line the machine. But these rinse nozzles, we have some down here. We can see them kind of hiding in here. There's one right there. Here's another over here. We have two up top as well. Those rinse nozzles, there we can see, get a great view of those here. Those rinse nozzles, that's where your final rinse water is coming through. And again, if we start getting into some hard water situations or harder water, uh, that's where that white, scaly, crusty uh, stuff we call lime scale will start to build up. So for right now, we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and clean off that scrap screen and clean my pump intake screen because I would never go one day without cleaning my pump intake screen and we'll come right back. All right, as always, I try to find a good angle so you can see these things. I'm gonna go ahead and put this pump intake screen back on in here. Got a little bit more room to work around, but I'm just gonna find those tracks. This one. Oh, good, got it on the second try. So pump intake screen is back on. I know that I've checked my floats. Those are looking good. I'm gonna grab at this point, let's back up just a bit. I'm gonna grab my Scrap screen, put that back in place. Like anything else, I'm giving my general visual inspection of everything that I can reach inside this tank. I'm gonna take a look at the back of the machine too, uh, make sure everything is clear in there, nothing's gotten built up. Uh, one of the things, if you get the opportunity, I always like to see, everyone always likes to see, if you can reach in there, you see those tubes back here. It's always never a bad idea to see if you can get a cleaning cloth behind those and run it up and down. Sometimes things like to get uh, get stuck behind those. It's just one of those areas where same thing like your scrap screen. If you do it fairly often and just keep an eye on it, it never gets really all that dirty. So with that said, we've taken a good look inside of our scrap screen or our, uh, our auxiliary rinse tank here. And we are gonna move on to our unload section and our load section. So hold on for what you got. So one thing we're gonna add to our daily cleaning is these nice little curtains. We see these blue curtains all throughout our machine, right? We have uh, the stickers on the machine. You can see here that say medium curtain, long curtain. Sometimes you'll see a short curtain. What these do, and I think it's always important to explain why these are so important. Uh, what these do is they're specifically designed in length and the way in which they are, uh, the direction of these and the different flaps and all the layers inside of these, these are designed not so much to keep the water inside the machine, which is still one of the goals behind these curtains, but more often than not, uh, the reason why these curtains are the size they are, the design they are, and where they are is to keep heat inside the machines because we're constantly being asked as, uh, as manufacturers of products that are of course Energy Star rated, we're constantly being asked to use less electricity, less water, all these things, but still at the end of the day, 
produce a clean dish, which we want you to have. And so we have to keep as much heat inside the machine as possible, and that's what we achieve with these curtains. So this is why it's always very important to A, match up the correct curtains where they go, and then also keep them directional. Because you can see, you have the smaller flap, this next layer of flaps, and then the longest one in the back, right? So these are directional, so as the dishes go through the machine, you can even see, let's try to get up in here nice and close, you can even see on this little decal right here, if we zoom way in, it even shows you how the flaps go if you look in real nice and detailed. So what we see when we look at those details is that, let's move this back out, is that this part that starts with this little flap and the smallest part and then moves to the medium and then all the way to the longer ones there in the back, that is the direction in which the, uh, the plates and all the fun things you're putting through your dish machine are going to go. So they will always be, so my load end is that on the right, so my all my dishes are going from right to left, and you may have a left to right machine at your facility, but if mine is moving from right to left, I would want them to come in contact with this first, the outer part being the one that keeps the most heat inside this machine. So on a daily basis, we're gonna go ahead, want to go ahead and pull these out. They just sit on these nice little hooks inside the machine. You'll see it when you open up the door. We're gonna to wanna to pull these out, take them over to the three compartment sink, give them a nice little wash down. You can even pull these up and try to get in between them and give them a nice little rinse down. Now these are replaceable items. These are uh, typically replaced either once a quarter or maybe once every few months. It's mainly one of those things that's general, generally visual. You just take a look at them because heat and time and chemicals and water and everything, these will get brittle. Maybe some of these will tear off because somebody uh, wasn't quite so gentle with them. They just wear out over time. It's a very normal replacement item. And this is what I will say from us here at Champion is we have designed these specifically uh, and very cal in a very calculated way uh, to keep heat inside of our machines. Uh, there are different options out there and sometimes much less expensive options that don't quite keep heat in and do exactly what they're supposed to, but they can seem a little bit more attractive from a price standpoint. I will say the ones you can get from us, we try to price them as absolute best as we can and uh, we try not to mark things up any further than they need to be, uh, but we do have a very good option for the curtains that were designed specifically for your machine. So keep your curtains clean, take them out every once a day, Give them a nice little rinse off. If you see any issues or one that's wearing out good and proper, let your manager know. Let's get a new set on order. And uh, never a bad idea to have an extra set just on hand in case you need it. So, but never go a, any time using this machine. Never use this machine without all of the curtains being placed back in their proper places, the right sizes, uh, the way that they're supposed to go, or you're not gonna get the results you're looking for. So just like we did in our in between the meal period cleaning, at the end of the day, same thing on our load section and our, or excuse me, our unload section and our load section on the other end of the machine. We're gonna wanna look down in there and make sure nothing's gotten built up. This is also a great time to pull out that, that wash down hose that you may have somewhere around the dish room and spray down the inside of the machine and try to get those items to go towards those drains that are on either side. Now you can see, we also have the ability to get inside here a little bit better. And that may be uh, more for the weekly cleaning, but if you do see something and need to access it, now's a great time I'm gonna show you how. So we're gonna be able to, we're gonna open up this front cover here. So let me move this back a little bit and let's take a look down in here. Let's give you a nice little angle. All right, so if you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead and our stop switch doesn't really matter which position that's in, but I'm going to go ahead and grab my top plate right here. This little plate where you're a place where you, I'm sure, stack things up. That comes off. So we're going to pull that straight off. And I'm going to set that somewhere safe. And that's probably not safe. So I'm going to put that over here. Next, I'm going to grab this front cover. And I'm going to pull that straight up and off. And this allows me access to everything inside of here, or at least everything within reach that I need to grab that uh, off of this screen right here. And I'll show that to you in just one moment. And I'll show you. So here, you can see that now that I have that front screen or front panel taken off, I have access to the inside here where I can get to that screen. And you can see it right there. So if I've taken my wash down hose and I've cleaned off everything inside of here, 
on this section, it's all gonna run right down into that screen, that turtle back screen we see there, turtle shell screen, whatever you wanna call it today. So that's where we're gonna clean that off. And so at the end of all that, once we're done, we're just gonna reinstall. Let's go ahead and do that right now. We're gonna take this front panel, we're gonna set that right inside here. Just gonna line that up. Take that right down inside of there. Then we grab that cap and we're just gonna set it, line it up and set it right in there. So then it's all put back together. And we will do that same thing. We will repeat that for the unload section here. And we can do the same thing down at the other end for our load section. All right, so the last thing we're gonna wanna do for the day is exactly what you've seen me do here, right? So we've cleaned out our pre-wash, our wash, our auxiliary rinse. We've gone to our unload section. We've uh, sprayed everything down, made sure there's no, uh, no dirt, no grime, no bits and pieces of anything cleaned out those little drains. We have not forgotten because we would never ever forget about our pump intake screens and we've wiped down our upper and lower floats along with all those other things. Done the same thing on our wash end to, or our load end of the machine, excuse me. Taken off those covers, taken off that access panel, gotten everything out of those little drains and, and cleaned it all out in there. So the last thing we're gonna do is exactly what you've seen that I've done here is if we have the ability and you have the, the room and space to do it, we're gonna shut down for the evening and this machine isn't gonna get used until either tomorrow morning or maybe lunchtime, uh, is we're gonna go ahead and open up all these doors, allow the machine to dry out. Because just like anything else in, in the kitchen and all the other things we've learned in ServeSafe and all these other places, is that we don't want new water nesting. And if we do have the ability for something to dry out, we wanna give it the ability to dry out, especially after we've cleaned it. So leave the doors open overnight if you have the ability. And then from there, at this point, you are done with your daily cleaning. And as you do it and you get some more practice with it, it won't take that long. Again, I always encourage, grab yourself a cart if possible. I know that they are things in the kitchen that are sometimes tough to come by, but grab a cart, especially if you're anywhere, uh, you know, within, not within easy reach of your three compartment sink and use that cart to your advantage so that way you can keep track of these individual pieces. Because again, if you do this, if you do these things on a daily basis, I guarantee you this machine will last you so much longer and reduce those times where the machine may be down for a service interruption, because that's never fun when that happens. So there's your daily cleaning. Up next, we will do our once a week cleaning where we do all these same things and then add a couple little things to it. And then we also may delime it as well. And I'll show you how that's done here on this, uh, this Pro Series machine. So that is your daily cleaning. Good job. All right, everyone, back for one of the last installments of our cleaning video here on our Champion Flight Type dish machine. We're gonna go over what we need to do for our end of the week cleaning. So we've done our in between the meal periods, kind of a quick little cleaning. We've done our end of the day, which is something that we gotta keep up with every day to keep this machine tip top, sparkling clean, looking good. Now at the end of the week, what we're gonna do is basically do everything uh, that we did on our daily cleaning. We're gonna run through and do all that stuff. And I'm not gonna go over it again because we just did on the video, but we're gonna do one of those full daily cleanings, but we're gonna add a couple more little items to it. And we're gonna start with our uh, wash arms, upper and lower for the pre-wash and our wash. So I'm gonna grab one of those, those uh, wash arms and we're gonna take a look at it on my cart over here. So I'm showing this to you on my lower wash arm for my pre-wash. Now this will apply to both upper and lower wash arms that look like this on the pre-wash and the wash section. So what we're really going to be looking at, again, we're always going to want to be checking our nozzles, these little holes all the way down this to make sure there's nothing obstructing those or nice and clean. But we're also going to want to go ahead and pop off these end caps. So we're gonna do, we're gonna take them all off, but I'm gonna show you what we're looking for. And we wanna give a nice little inspection. I'll let that go ahead and focus in. There we go. So what we're looking for is gonna give a nice little inspection. Come on, focus, you can do it. Of 
this o-ring and i want to make sure it's nice and clean nothing's built up on top of it also i mean well let's just go ahead and be put this out there make sure it's there uh, and then we're going to want to make sure that it's not wearing or starting to kind of crack off, which they will do in time. These are a little rubber O-ring that wears out over time, but it's meant to keep this seal nice and tight. So when we put that back on, we'll stick it in there and then we'll turn it to the right, about a quarter, maybe a little bit more than a quarter of a turn. So what these do is when this machine is pumping water from the manifold back through this, we want the water, all this wash water, coming through these nozzles, not the end caps. And if for some reason those O-rings are either missing or degraded like they do over time, you'll see a lot of water starting to come out of here. And the worst, worst case scenario is if somebody takes one of these off and doesn't put it back on, then you've got water just coming out of here and washing down your door of the machine. Well, which keeps the door of the machine very clean. It doesn't do much for your dishes, which ultimately defeats the purpose of a dishwasher. So let's go ahead and keep those end caps always on, but we want to check them out every once in a while and always check on those O-rings in there. So that'll be one of those things that we add to that weekly cleaning. They would just mainly all it is is just an inspection. If you do see any kind of buildup, go ahead and clean it off. Let's move on to something else. So we're down here at our auxiliary and final rinse section of the machine. That'll be the last one before your unload section. So what we're going to do is zoom in here. I've got my light in there so we can see what we're doing. Now remember, we've got one of these on the top and just down on the bottom. But don't be confused. There's two different ones in here. The last set of nozzles, and let's get in here and see what I'm talking about. You've got these sets of nozzles inside of here. So this is the one for the final rinse this one over here on the left this will be the last one before you get to that curtain that's inside the machine and then we've got the one on the bottom now those do not come out those will stay inside the machine those don't need to come out but this one just before there's one up here and there's one matching that's uh that's down here below as well those are going to need to come out on a weekly basis and the reason being is we want to do the same thing like we did on those wash arms. Is there's a couple of O-rings, and we want to make sure that those are in good condition. Now, I'm not going to lie. These are not the easiest thing to get out, but once you've done it a couple times, you kind of get the feel of it, uh, and there's a little bit of a learning curve. So what I'll do is show you that you just give it a little quarter turn and wiggle, and then they come right out. Like I said, that's just one of those things that comes with a little bit of practice. So let's zoom on in there. See these little red O-rings. And when I say O-rings, yes, I'm talking about rings on both the upper one and the lower one, these ones that are removable. There are two, count them, two O-rings. So we need to stack those O-rings and make sure that those are in good condition. So what you'll do is look in there, A, make sure they're both there, B, just kind of, like I said, with those other O-rings, make sure they're in good condition. These are one of those things that do, in time, it does take quite some time, but in time they will wear out and degrade a little bit. And what we do, same thing, we want that seal to make sure that the water's coming out of these nozzles. Now, while we're talking about these nozzles, I'll see if I can get this to focus in here good and proper. There we go. So these little nozzles right here, are where our auxiliary rinse, where basically where our final rinse water is recycled down inside this tank and comes back through this auxiliary rinse. So the plates and the everything that goes through this machine, they see this just before they see the final rinse. And this helps to build heat, wash off any uh, detergent that's left on. So we really need these doing their job. Now these are very much more of a finer spray pattern than like let's say on our wash, uh, wash arms that we were messing with and cleaning just a minute ago. So we're gonna to wanna to take a look inside here and make sure that there is no obstructions, nothing has gotten in there and blocking those nozzles and the, the little hole you see in there, uh, as well as buildup of any kind of lime scale that can happen. That's that white crusty stuff we always continue to talk about. And make sure that these are free flowing. Now, if for some reason uh, they are blocked up with anything, soil of any kind or any kind of uh, uh, deer, uh, what do they call it, uh, lime scale, the absolutely technical way that we have of cleaning these things, and there's this is even what we recommend, is grab yourself a good old paper clip, find one of those hanging around, and go ahead and uncurl it and uh, work it in there and try to work any kind of debris that's in there free. Now, 
Another very important thing to remember, when we go, once we're done inspecting our O-rings and done inspecting our nozzles, both upper and we have this lower one down here, don't forget about that. That's this one, let's see if we can get a good view of it. You can see that down in here, I'm kind of holding on to it. Yeah, we can see it, good deal. But when we go to put these on, remember where your dishes are coming through. They are coming through the inside of the machine. When you put this back in here, uh, we have seen it before where people will put it on upside down where you have those nozzles facing out to the top of the machine, which is wonderful for keeping the, uh, the roof of the machine nice and rinsed off, but that's not really what we're trying to accomplish. Remember, this is a dishwasher. We want to wash the dishes. So we're going to want to make sure that these nozzles when we reinstall this and put it back on, get it up in there, these nozzles are facing down towards our dishes. And then the one that's down below here, we're gonna to wanna to make sure those nozzles are facing up and pointing water up that way. Um, that may seem very intuitive, uh, but it's one of those things that we wanna make sure that we address while we're here. So those two items right there added on top of our uh, our daily cleaning that we're gonna do each week. So those are items that we would add on to our weekly cleaning right there. We'll be right back. All right, everyone. So this last thing that we're gonna demo here, and this only applies to the Pro Series machines. So use your operator, refer back to your operator's manual on other style, the standard style of Champion Flight type machine. If you have one with the main power button and then it has the digital gauges all over the place, uh, for how to do the D-line procedure on that, but I'm gonna show you how to do that on the Pro Series machine while we're here. Now, I'm putting this into the category of weekly cleaning or one of the things you need to do on a weekly basis, but it doesn't always need to be done on a weekly basis. It really depends on your water conditions and how fast that uh, the scale builds up inside your machine. So it's never a bad idea to take a look at the scale condition in, in the inside of your machine every week or every day for that matter, uh, but this not, doesn't necessarily need to be done during every week. So keep in mind, this is a demo machine, so it's gonna go through this fairly fast. So what I've done from the home screen, I've just hit the little gears or the little wrench you see down there, and I'm gonna go into a Perform D-Lime now. Now these will come equipped from the factory uh, with a little timer inside the machine that will actually go by the hours that this machine is being used to give you a nice little reminder it's time to check on these. But if I wanna go ahead and just perform the D-Lime now, what I'm gonna do is hit this button, it's gonna say D-Lime is required. Are you ready to proceed? And if it is truly time to D-Lime this machine, you're gonna say yes. And now the machine, again, this is on the Pro Series machines only, the machine's gonna go ahead and automatically start draining. So once it's drained out all that water, it's gonna give you a nice little indicator here saying, okay, go ahead and open up your doors, clean all the screens, and then close all the doors. So that's everything we just talked about a little while ago. So we're gonna open up the doors, pull out all the different screens, your pump intake screens, the normal scrap screens. We're gonna to wanna to make sure the machine's at a nice base level clean. And then we're gonna close all those doors and we're gonna hit continue. So the machine at this point is gonna fill back up. <clears throat> this could take a couple of minutes, again, because it's a larger machine. Keep in mind, this is kind of flying through it because it's in a demo mode. So it's gonna say, okay, D-line. We're gonna open the doors, we're gonna add the necessary chemicals. Now, I can't tell you how much chemical is gonna need uh, per tank on, this on your machine. Only your local chemical provider can tell you that and which chemical to use. So what I'm gonna say at this point is use good safety measures. D-liming chemical is some pretty, uh, pretty strong stuff. So wear eye protection, wear skin protection, wear some gloves while you're doing this and always, always take care when pouring those products into your machine, do it slowly, do it safely. You don't want that stuff splashing back at you and getting on you. And if for some reason it does get on you, make sure to clean it off. And there's all their uh, guidelines and procedures that for some reason it does get in your eyes, refer back to the manufacturer of that product. Uh, but I'm just saying as much as I possibly can to say, just take care, go slow. Um, there's no need to dump all that stuff and, uh, and get it splashed back on you. All right, enough said about that. So once you have added that chemical to the, each of the individual tanks, you'll add that to your pre-wash, you'll add that to your wash section, you'll add that to your, um, your uh, auxiliary rinse over here, you're gonna go ahead and close up all the doors and you're gonna hit continue. Now this is your last opportunity to get out of all this um, and it says press and hold for three seconds to cancel the D-line process. But I will say that once you have dumped that D-line chemical into those tanks, 
you have to run through this procedure. So I'm gonna go ahead and say continue and then talk you through what's gonna happen. Because the normal conditions and normally how these machines are set up, deliming is gonna take ooh, probably anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. But the beauty of this automated cycle and the way we have designed this is this should be the last thing you do at the end of the day. That way you can start this process and then walk away. And then it'll be ready to go for you tomorrow morning when you come back in. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. And at this point, it's out of your hands. Now this is counting down in seconds. It would normally be in minutes, right? That would normally, that whole deliming wash would have taken 30, 45 minutes, an hour. And then the machine's gonna automatically drain itself and then fill itself back up with clean water. And then it's gonna go into a rinse. And this delime rinse will usually be about, eh, let's say 10 minutes or so, five minutes. And then it's gonna drain itself again. It's gonna fill up one more time, as you'll see here in a second and then it'll drain one more time. So it'll delime wash for let's say 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, and then it'll delime rinse twice. And at the end, of, or excuse me, when you come back in tomorrow morning, this is what you're gonna see. You're gonna have a machine that doesn't have any water in it. It's not gonna be heating up. It's not gonna have the, you know, any of the heaters going or anything like that. It's just gonna be sitting here ready to go. And it's just gonna say delime complete. Press continue to fill and return to normal operation. So once you hit continue, that machine will at this point then start filling back up with water uh, and start dosing detergent, things like that, and getting, uh, getting the machine back up and ready. So at this point, we're gonna wrap this up. We've done our in between the meal periods cleaning. We've gone through that whole procedure. We've done our end of the day cleaning that we need to do every day on the machine. And then we've done our weekly check, check over on the machine in addition to that cleaning. So if you have any further questions on anything maintenance to do with your machine, daily cleaning, anything we can help you with at all, give us a call at Champion. All of our information is available on our website, championindustries.com. We appreciate you taking the time to learn more about keeping your Champion machine up and running and as healthy and as happy as it can possibly be. And if we can help you all at any time and in any way, just reach out. We're always happy to do that. Thank you and have a great day.